Swoosh. Curtain goes up. Yeah, got us going. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. To Final Fantasy XIV and Walker. We're sitting on the title screen. Uh, mostly because I just wanted to see, show you guys my new uh, a Dark Knight assemblage. I've, uh, I've, I've taken some Clive bits and thrown some other stuff in there. Just because I think the uh, the 2B thigh highs goes a lot better on my character than the normal Metian shoes. But here we are. Also, yes, I have the Ifrit greatsword. But we're chilling here. We're logged out uh, in Idleshire and all. Ugh. Sorry, that was while I was turning away from the microphone. You probably didn't see me say I would start the login process. Uh, we'll start the login process to get me back to Idleshire. I was there doing some things. Some custom deliveries and some minor stuff, because, I don't know, my, yeah, maybe hang out in Idleshire a lot. Even, even though I am technically in the Stormblood quest line for minor at this point, they're like, yeah, go, uh, we can't come up with a reason for you to go with the Miner's Guild anyway to go all the way to uh, Kugane, nor to have you uh, be able to fuck around in... You know, the north. My brain keeps wanting to say Garobani about that specific location. I'm like, why, why, why are you not feeding me the words Alamigo? But yeah, we're here. But that's not where we're gonna stay. We're gonna get back to the thing. Uh, I don't even know if anybody's in the VC yet. I am starting a little early just because I had some time to kill. You know, cooked myself a pizza that went swimmingly. We've eaten, we're chilling. We're all our stuff. Yes, unfortunately you're gonna have to stare at my, the game yelling at me to do a minor quest because that's where I left off last night. Deep in the fog. because uh, it's geographical. Teleporting to the Great Work from Idleshire is cheaper than teleporting to Kugane. But we're here. And so... We'll keep keeping. Oh, yes, there are some people in the VC, so I can scooch over there. Sorry, if you hear me go, huh, or huh, and make a sound, which I actually don't know if me wiping my brow is communicatable to the microphone, but uh, like that is warm, y'all. He's decided to be war warm again. All right, let's get the VC. Let's get the VC and chill.
And yes, Chad, I had to shatter my ankles to get dialogue with this Tinio. It was very important. Always. Eh, hey, you're a dragoon. Your your ankles are reinforced. It's true. Oh, I should have tried to elusive jump backflip off the stairs. <coughs> then I would have been fine. That's definitely not correct, by the way. In case anybody hasn't played Dragoon, you are not fine just because you elusive jump. You can, in case you haven't seen me do that, you can back jump off of things. There's a reason why we make these jokes.
mañana. Oh, yeah, another jumping puzzle. Yeah. I'll figure it out at some later date. Check if I can jump on the cart easy, but it's just I feel like every time I go to a new big city in in. 14, I just see the little sightseeing mark on top of like a lamppost or something, and I'm just like, oh, I can't believe you've done this. As I recall, that one is nowhere near as bad as Kugane Tower, though. I, I don't think anything's ever been as bad <coughs> as Kugane Tower. There were a couple that were a little complex in like the Crystarium, but I'm pretty sure I've gotten those by now. It's just those moments where you just like, you see it, and you see that it's obviously like on top of something, and you just know, oh, you're gonna make me jump. I wonder what new terrible things Dawn Trail will give us. <laughs> Sightseeing point on top of a ceruleum well. We're gonna climb to the top of the Gravix Tower and have to jump off of it. <laughs> I mean, we might. Isn't is that, uh, isn't the Arcadian uh, was that a raid location? I think they said was the giant G GPU tower. All right. Well, we could, it could always turn into an, a new lo travelable location later. True. And Solution 9 will be full of weird shit, I'm sure. you if I have to. Mr. Big yep. the last to arrive? I hope we've not kept you waiting. Not at all. Your comrade is feeling better, I trust. Much better, thank you. Harness remedies are certainly potent in more ways than one. One becomes accustomed to the taste, although I hope you never have cause to do so. Pray, take your ease. Full glad I am to see you all unharmed. Valiant sons, for your heroism, you have my boundless gratitude. You cast down that dire tower and set free its hapless captives. You cleanse their souls of its corrupting influence. No words of thanks will suffice. In place of platitudes, I offer a bounty of warding scales. Pray accept your due reward, along with the goodwill of Radzatan. 
Alchemists throughout the land were put to work in the forging of your talismans. The finished ones have been collected, and now await you at the High Crucible of Alchemia. Present this letter when you are ready to take them into your possession. We are humbled by your generosity. Know that the inventive wisdom of Radzat Han will be vital in restoring serenity to our star. Every single one of those scales came from you, didn't they? You must still be in such pain. Tis of no moment. A mere annoyance compared to the dreadful suffering inflicted upon this land and its people. Albeit brief, my involvement in the Dragonsong War afforded me a glimpse of the myriad sorrows which consumed both dragon and man. Though you were half a world away, such tragedies as befell your kin must have affected you deeply. And yet, you chose to live among men. In the age when that conflict first bloomed, my choice had already been made. In some distant place, man slew dragon, and dragon slaughtered man. Yet no hate could I muster for those smiling faces which did look to me for guidance. Not even my brother's righteous rage could rally me to his cause. I huddled here, secret and still, hoping against hope that which I had built would remain untouched by the chaos and carnage. It would seem we share the same desire for peace, Great Vritra. To that end, I wonder if we might trouble you with another question. The Telophoroi are intent on recreating the final days, an apocalyptic event which we know to predate the sundering of the star. As the longest lived among us, know you aught oh, of no. this terrible cataclysm. Hey, Lucky. Right. Looks here. Nay, when war and strife drove my sire from his home, he crossed the great expanse with only our unhatched eggs as company. He alighted upon a shattered source, its thirteen reflections long since scattered beyond the rift. Of events preceding his arrival, he knoweth not, Save that which Hydralin hath deigned to disclose. I see. So again, tis the inscrutable Hydralin to whom you must look for answers. It's gonna be rough, Yashtola. Seek you to Campbell divine Mom's, the will uh, of the If so, I have a tale which may afford you some small comfort. And believe it or not, these 5G towers that Fan Daniel built are not helping my telephone reception. Tis a story from my youth many, many years ago. To my sire, I once posed the question, of all the stars in the sky, why didst thou settle upon this one? To which Midgard Summer did reply, "'Twas the last bastion of hope. He believed, so long as Hydaelyn endured, so too might dragonkind. Solemn and portentous were his words. What deeper meaning they held, I could not, dared not pursue. Tis a stone I've left unturned ever since. Yet take you solace in the knowledge that whatsoever Hydralin does strive towards, 
is an ideal which has earned my sire's conviction. Thank you, Vritra. You've given us warm reassurance in a world gripped by cold uncertainty. You can trust my snake grandpa's judgment. He knows what's up. While I'm sure we all have a great many questions, I think it's time we collect the talismans and be on our way. Our fight against the Talofaroi is far from finished. We must take our leave, but please do inform us if we can provide any further assistance. Pretty a moment. There is one whom my sire hath judged worthy of honor and respect. The one known to men as Eorzea's champion. This hero of renown and rumor, tis thee. I know of his clash with Omega, and the long slumber which was his price. Yet even closed in sleep, my father's eyes are far from blind. He is watching over thee, watching over this world. T'was a revelation most pleasing that thou, a child of man, had gained Midgard Summer's trust, but alongside my elation runneth a rivulet of dread, for upon thy life's wheel wind too many threads of fate, power, wheel enmeshed with woe. Amidst this tangled knot thou shalt know no rest, tis an endless confluence of forces, a struggle without surcease. More terrible still is the attrition wrought upon thy companions, as they are swept up in the storm of thine existence. Don't worry, Vritra. We're planning a huge vacation as soon as all of this is over. <laughs> Where absolutely nothing will go wrong. Definitely won't have to worry about any bullshit. Mm, yep, no, that la that last one was definitely that's that's me's. Pretty sure you sailed in everything under her own. She was already world. becoming an expert. She was already wrapped up in this shit. Some of those would be the last out my beat. The harsh one definitely took come the end. a bullet for me. Guys, I can't have a talk with the dragon for like ah, 15 apologies. minutes. We haven't met. It's just that we do have a history of suddenly collapsing, and when you didn't follow us out. Tis I who must apologize. I have to change your champion so over long watching with the Yes, chatter. I did switch to Dragoon just to hang out with a city and do this cutscene. Go. At I, mean, I, end, I pray I welcome thee back into my hall. Went together just when the city is now following you. Comrades, well, so clearly this must now be totally triumph. No, I did the um the uh, sixty to seventy uh, dragoon quest line. 
So I was like, yeah, I mean, it's Indian hanging out, talking down dragons. After engaging in a little casual dragonette smuggling, <laughs> actually, if I if I remember side material, apparently, actually, uh, those two, uh, the dragonette and the stadium, actually hang out for a while. And, uh, Yeah, I think, because obviously the next, you know, set is just the, the capstone in 80. Uh, I'm pretty sure in the 80 check-in he talks about that he, you know, hung low with Astinian for a little bit before going about his business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is where Astinian's uh, fried squid. So this is when Astinian lost all his money and Kral and, and uh, Tataro chased him around for a while. Yeah, no, that was the side story. Um, the city and trying to escape from to a uh, Lalafels and could not do it. I think that I mean, I don't know, you know, exactly at what point, uh, like for instance, Cryo will be added to the trust system, like as an NPC. Uh, but I'm gonna presume that if if Pictomancer starts at uh, at, at eighty, that means that she's probably around there. So that's that's not that shocking. Um, the, definitely the scary part is, you know, Astidian can't outpace Tataru, who, as far as we know, um, it do doesn't really have a lot of a lot of class or job levels. She uh, flunked out of Arcanist school. She, she was level 70 for the Four Lords quests. Yeah, she but she was also utterly incompetent in the Four Lords quest. She was, a, she, yeah, I guess she was a level, she may have been a high level NPC, but uh, her uh, carbuncle is level negative one. That, or we just need to get Tataru to go on her quest and get some fucking gym badges so carbuncle will listen to her. That's her problem, she's over level. She, she uh, can't control a carbuncle of that level. It was very funny to go back and actually do Arcanist stuff and realize that she literally fails the level one quest you do. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I don't think the Crystarium was that confusing. It was just kind of like broadly semicircle shaped. They did have some verticality. It was a little hard to tell what level you were supposed to be on. But yeah, I think the verticality in Crystarium took a, a bit to get used to. But that was only in a in a couple of spots. Like walking the main mainly, walk in the market was pretty easy. I think it was mainly the aetherite placement because of the verticality. The aetherites made it hard to determine. All right, which one is actually the closest? Yeah, definitely on the mini map, figuring out which aetherite you need to go to was weird. But it was. Mostly just their like little underground like garden or reservoir and the library that was like, okay, hold on, wait. Do you want me to go to the top deck where all the crafter shit is, or do you want me to go way down to the library? Mm. You know, the the apartments, the pub, you know, the inn basically, uh, and then the markets were all pretty on the level. Lots of people hanging on the Aetherite Plaza. I believe one of the guards said that this is still locked down. Yes, temporarily disabled. Sad that I can't even unlock a local Aetherite from there, but it's fine. Takes all kinds. These are the talismans we were promised. 
Yes, and I made a quick count. There are far more than we could have hoped for. Enough to outfit an entire company of soldiers, in fact. Considering the involved process, that they were able to manufacture so many in such a short span of time is nothing short of a miracle. Once we have distributed them to our allies in Eorzea and the Far East, we'll have a fighting chance to bring down the other spires, just as we did with the Tower of Zot. Or we could use them to invade Garlemald proper and strike directly at the Telophoroi's base of operations. I'm gonna guess we're gonna do that one. That second one. Of course, we would need to consult with various Alliance leaders before such a drastic measure could even be contemplated. As I feel like, I don't know how many towers there are, but if there's like one for every like major region, that's a lot of tower dungeons that I don't think are in this game. To which end, I could set out forthwith and present the idea to each of our allies in person. Pray allow me to undertake some few of those journeys. I find myself restless and in need of purposeful duties. I can head eastward. Bosnia and Dalmasca are just a short hop from here. And Doma's Shinobi network should come in handy for passing on the word. We shall share the burden then. Meanwhile, I think it best that you and the others take the talismans back to the Baldessian Annex. We must keep them safe and secure until we've decided upon a course of action. Please, I must speak with you. I ain't it, Hannah. Nidana, you're awake. Yes. When I spoke with the carer at my bedside, she told me that one of the scions, a young woman, had cleansed me of the tower's corruption. It seems I'd been asleep ever since the treatment. But when I awoke and learned you were all still here, I knew I had to come. As you said, Nidana was captured only recently. Such a brief exposure is swiftly cured, so I tended to her before we gathered at Megaduta. And I am truly grateful that you did. I cannot thank you enough. All of you, for everything you've done. Destroying the tower, rescuing our people. You've saved Havnir from an awful fate. Yet who hath truly saved whom? Due in no small part to thine inspirational courage, the alchemists were successful in reproducing warding scales of proven efficacy. Replications of thy work now stand ready to travel across the seas unto the hands of those who might wield them against this rising evil. The talisman? Is this true? Oh, I was so groggy from sleep. I didn't even think to ask. Oh, our great work sent across the seas. It was worth it. Oh, it was all worth it. Look at that. Its color is completely changed. What do you have there? Magic flower. How unusual. I wonder if the effect is a reaction to Akasha. I'm afraid I'm not familiar with that term. Akasha? 
It is one of the unseen energies defined by Hanish alchemical theory. Though a gross oversimplification, some describe it as an essence influenced by feelings. You imply that it is distinct from ether? Our foreign scholars often conflate the two, but we see them as separate concepts. Ether is an energy which permeates the land. It exists within animals, objects, even the air we breathe, affecting all through which it flows. Akasha, on the other hand, exists in a domain beyond our reach. A gift bestowed from on high, or torn from the heavens in some traditions. Akasha can neither be created nor destroyed. It is beyond our power to purposefully alter or manipulate. The only thing observed to influence it is an abundance of, I want to say, spiritual emotion. As a veteran of the battlefield, surely you've experienced moments of desperation or exaltation when you've transcended the usual limits of your capabilities. Look at these boys hanging out. That is a manifestation of Akasha, the invisible essence harnessed by oh. heart, mind, and unyielding spirit. I've been known to break my limit a couple of times, Nidana. I really must hear you more know, about this theory. Levels. Our disciplines are based entirely upon the idea that ether is the fundamental form of all energy. I'm glad my haphazard explanation has piqued your interest. But even for us, Akasha is a somewhat abstract field of study. A lack of practical application lends itself poorly to formalized research. Which is why my analysis of your flower can amount to little more than idle speculation. I am sorry. Nonsense! You have nothing to be sorry for. Your insight is much appreciated. Nidana, you don't realize that as main characters in this story, the fact that you just stopped down to give me a 15-minute 15 expla 15 explanation of something means that it will be very important later. What was the explanation of? She was talking about uh, Akasha. Ah, The yeah. energy of emotions, and I'm just like, hmm, wow, Shall there's we no way this can come back later. There. I will You're see to it to that the, the talismans arrive at the annex. Some and we will be in touch once awesome. our talks are concluded. I suggest you rest while you can. From here onward, sleep is bound to be in short supply. What are you You're gonna be busy, busy bees. Wait, did you guys who? They did. I guess that means me and Astinian have to carry these boxes full of talismans. But Graha was still in the back there. These crates are as big as the toilets. I know it's not an exact marker, but the, the next stage of the main direction, the other stay on this level. But the next story quest level is still only 81. Yep, they take a while. But I'm back to the solemn bongos of Old Charlian. How many more hours, like Shadowbringer and Endwalker, have compared to the others? It's true. It's very story dense. I'm kind of curious if Dawn Trail will be different in that regard. Probably not, because it 
seems like we're effectively starting a new, like, macro arc. But it will be interesting to see how the density compares. That one we'll have to just figure out in real time. Though there will be, you know, some freaks who will, you know, literally uh, not sleep for like four days and do the entire thing. And we appreciate you. Take heart and protect them well. Face is a little weird in this lighting. Good, you're here. You haven't eaten yet, have you? We've bought quite a spread if you're interested. Only the finest dining from the last stand. These are fucking brown paper takeout bags. Surely it is very advanced, I see. Hold on a minute. Is that a three layered? Well, that's a giant burger. Mm. Enjoy that, Graha. Mm. Mm. Lest you wonder, we invited like, Astinian as well. Tray here? How do we fit that in the paper bag? But he refused with a rather grim-faced, No, thank you. I suspect Charlian cuisine is not to his liking. Clearly the Charlians have mastered <laughs> oh, Tardis technology. I don't technology. know about that. Perhaps yes. our lone wolf They've mastered giant fucking apart. cookies and pizza slices. What? To perfect his brooding stare? Next time, I'll drag him out by the ear, sit him down in front of a Charlian feast, and see that he eats every last bite. I suspect a stinian would enjoy a burger. An excellent idea. Of all people, warriors must take proper meals and rest, the if they are to maintain a healthy constitution. I think there are. Because I'm pretty sure those are models Poor of the game. Poor beset on all sides. God, I think these teacups are like proportionalized to your model size, so my teacup is huge. Speaking of one's physical condition, Mistress Quile, I hear you've recently played literal host to Heidelin herself. Oh, and what an experience that was. Tiring, yes, but no lasting harm done. <sighs> if anything, I should have liked to speak with her longer. I've not felt a hint of her presence since. Heidelin instructed you to carry that flower, yes? It will be your guide, test and proof of your conviction. And then something about seeking joy in darkness, was it? Come to think of it, isn't that what happened with Nidana back in Radzat Han? Hmm. The flower did seem to radiate a joyful glow, as if reflecting the elation we all felt, the relief of a people with renewed hope. Oh, that was a bowl of fruit. No, that's Indeed. Like, a, like a pie or a cake. And in turn, yes. I felt buoyed by that radiance. It was akin to spotting a beacon and knowing we were on the right path. I know we've not yet triumphed over the Tlofaroi or learned the full breadth of the Forum's plans. But even within the midst of our struggles, we find small moments of joy to sustain us. Rare and hard won, perhaps, but it is this pursuit of happiness that gives us the strength to carry on day after day. Hey, that's mine. To the swift the spoils. 
Though I recall that levitation spell of yours was quick enough. Mm, only barely. And even at my best, I'm still too slow to wield it effectively in battle. Mayhap I simply require more practice with this new magic. You unearthed it from the depths of Numenon, I presume? Aye, and from a veritable mountain of arcane tomes at that. Twas necessary to facilitate my solitary explorations. Or, to put it simply, you used it to sneak around the Forbidden Archives. I... Uh, yes, well, after a fashion. Shelves, they're too tall for me. And I could hardly move the library's platforms without attracting attention now, could I? Oh. oh. <laughs> that is why librarians do use ladders sometimes. I've never actually had to go to a library that needed the ladders. Uh, the most mine has is a step stool. in a library for a few years, but uh, I don't think I ever also ever needed anything more than the step stool to reach. And that was when I was a teenager too, so. <laughs> I'm not that ambitious, but it is pleasant to idle away the hours every once in a while. Sorry, don't mind me. I'm just reading fiction here, and I came across this charming part, this charming paragraph. Flowers. <laughs> oh, it's this you cannot stop. You cannot stop. You cannot stop, Mommy Lily Lear. I didn't realize his scythe was also a gun. Ah, scythe gun. Why not? Enjoying the bracing cold, I see. Do you not own a warm coat or a cloak? Something in fur, or fashioned from the skins of your enemies, or well, never mind that. I come to you once more as the bearer of bad news. Our tower in Thavnir has been toppled, and I need not tell you by whom. Given how many we have at our disposal, the loss of a single spire is hardly fatal to our plans. It does, however, slow the rate at which we siphon the ether. If they continue to preoccupy themselves with the towers, then all will be well. But should our foe prove bold enough to strike at us here, then the timing becomes... questionable. Our foe is bold enough. Of that, I can assure you. Yes, very well then. I suppose I must prepare a proper welcome. Honestly, talk of your nemesis is the only thing you seem to enjoy. Does nothing else spark your interest? I mean, Zenos might say that other things don't spark his interest, but the fashion definitely must. There's no way that he just casually threw on this, like gold brocade reversible cloak with a red shoulder. Hmm. No. All else is... What, did you just stumble headfirst into a wardrobe and came out wearing that? Equally tedious. 
equally disappointing. The you world totally is a tepid the... bog into which we sink, too weak to thrash as the mud is. clings to our eyes and fills I our I suppose he is, you know, like an totally imperial prince, choke. so there presumably were, are people who used to dress him, but it's just, it's it's funny that Xenos is like, everything is tepid, I don't care about anything, but also I'm super on fleek, guys. <laughs> I totally just wake up every morning looking but like this. But then came the light. You might blinding and pure and hot so very hot enough to set my soul aflame i basked in the afterglow i mean you have to look your best for your duel to the death with your best friend once more and that could happen any day and then i knew the muck would never claim me again there was naught for me ahead so i drew the curtain oh. that had come before Excuse me. Burn. Burn. Let the whole star burn. I will have my contest. I will reclaim my moment. How wonderful. That the emptiness of death has not dissuaded you from committing your life to its pursuit once more. A brief moment where Fandania has an expression on his face like, Oh my god, this guy. I don't know whether to envy you or pity you. You question my disinterest, but what of yours? Despite your noisome antics, I sense you take little pleasure in this endeavor. Mercy, my lord. Such pointed barbs from one who barely acknowledges my existence. Nevertheless, you are mistaken. For I do find this part somewhat enjoyable. Oh my god. Sorry, I'm just looking at the fucking blasted landscape of Garlemald and I'm just thinking, man, Lucky's right. This place does need a restoration. These motherfuckers don't got any trees. Got no color. You see, when Roads I are was fucked. mortal, I would always have the same dream. We need a gold saucer franchise. We need some fucking Archon burgers. It was a fragmented thing. Disjointed. All the faces incomplete. The setting, too, was unknown to me. So I thought it simply a fantasy of my sleeping mind. Until one day, I realized it was showing me the truth. Much as your dream of the final days enlightened you. And soon, very soon, the rest of the world will see the truth of my dream, too. Yes. I think that is something we can both enjoy.
straight up said it. Called him a master debater. That's an outdoor forge. Sounds like a dog is approaching. Listen, I'm sure I'll be back later. If only because of your similar uh, clan name to another person I've delivered a lot of random stuff to. All right, and I'm back. Oh, this is one of those magical schools. Got it. If you lose your way, just follow the blood curdling screams. Nah, it's gonna be one of those days, huh? I pray we have not caught you at an inopportune moment. We wanted to offer our thanks for your kind words in the forum. Well, I could hardly let that Inquisition go unchallenged. I've always believed that curiosity should be nurtured, not stifled. Thankfully, a majority of my colleagues agreed. A slender majority, I. But a majority, nonetheless. Had the vote not gone our way, we would be having a very different conversation. 
if any at all. Though I'd like to think you would have not given up on our cause. I'm told you paid a visit to the Annex afterwards. Yes, that's right. I was hoping to speak with the grandchildren of my dearly departed friends Gallif and Louisois in a less doer setting. But it seems I just missed you. I still can't believe how much you've grown. If only your grandsires could have seen the way you presented yourselves to the Forum. My affair brought a tear to my own eye. You must have the patience of a saint putting up with this lot and their antics. Never mind Matoya's prize student. I mean, it's less that I put up with Ishtola and more that she puts up with us. It's true. Luckily, I know a thing or two about managing unruly younglings. If you ever need advice, don't hesitate to ask. If I may, there is a rather more pressing matter we wish to discuss. What can you tell us of this duty that the Forum must fulfill? Nothing, I'm afraid. Like all humble servants of the Forum, I am sworn to secrecy. Or rather, I couldn't tell you if I tried. Uh, have you been lolly load? <laughs> Our duty is of the gravest importance. Furthermore, if the particulars were made public, it would incite widespread panic. As such, those entrusted with this duty have been bound by an enchantment, which prevents us from speaking of such matters without the express permission of the Forum. Magical NDA, got How it. is that even possible? <laughs> It's been some time since I last gave a lecture. Please, take a seat. We shall begin by reviewing the fundamentals of etherology. The ether, which imbues us with life, can be categorized into three forms. Two are of the incorporeal sort, the soul and the memory. Can anyone tell me the third? What? He's talking. About, I'm being lectured about the three types of ether. I'm like, I'm, the answer it is, is corporeal. corporeal ether. I'm pretty sure ether. I heard that phrase before. I do want to say though, Mr. Categorization Man, being like memory, soul, and then also the corporeal ether. That's like not how categories work. <laughs> just added that third thing. This is thing. the form with which the layman is most familiar. Consumed by even the simplest of daily activities and replenished by the food and drink that sustain us, this form of ether is in constant flux. In contrast, the ether that comprises the soul is rarely subject to dramatic change. The same can be said for memory, as the two are intrinsically linked. Picture the soul as paper, and memories as words written upon it. Now, what would happen if that paper was doused with ink, the same type of ether as comprises the memories?
it would blot out everything that was written. Manual censorship. Precisely. We would be unable to recall the memories. And any activities that depend upon them would be hindered as well. In fact, this exact phenomenon was observed on a vast scale not so long ago. And what might that have been? The Seventh Umbral Calamity. The people of Eorzea vividly recall Bahamut breaking free of the Lesser Moon and raining hellfire down upon the realm. But no one could seem to remember the events that followed immediately afterwards. Because they were too awesome to remember. Indeed. To this day, we have yet to determine whether it was an unintended consequence or a deliberate act. The enchantment which binds me and the rest of the Forum is based on a similar principle. And yes, it is a contravention of the Charlien prohibition against the practice of memory manipulation. Only when a new member is inducted and told of our great duty are they subjected to the process. A necessary evil. You have my word that it would never be used to manipulate the populace. I should hope not. But can this enchantment be dispelled and your memories restored? If nine-tenths of our members give their approval, then the process may be reversed. Then, and only then, would we be able to speak freely to others of our sacred duty. Barring that, we must wait until we return to the Ethereal Sea. Ah, so ghosts are exempt from your rules. I know any dead people who used to be part of the forum. For there we will be purified. The blots upon our souls washed clean. I mean, yes? I would still summon Grandpa Luis Wad to bitch slap them. Yeah, I'm about to say. And our memories drift apart and dissolve. Rather I suspect the twins might be a little nettled by that. We try to dial up their grandpa just so he can tell me fucking state secrets. But there are those memories that are indelibly etched upon our souls, some believe. Hmm. Part of the forum. What happens after that? We are reduced to pure ether, coalesce with that of others, and create souls anew. Alternative schools of thought assert souls remain whole and return to the corporeal world, reborn into another form. Both theories have their proponents. Personally, I consider each equally probable. Well, I think that's enough education for today. Now that I've given you some food for thought. Or rather, an entire banquet. I would remind you that although I'm unable to assist you with certain matters, the resources at my disposal may still be of use to you. I'll arrange for you all to be given the run of Phenomenon. Of course, as associate to our alumni and the students of Baldessian, this privilege is extended to you as well, my friend. Oh! And I suggest you speak with Ki Aliapo. She's well known among the artisans of Charlian, and her network of contacts may prove useful in your search for knowledge. I wish you all the best in your pursuits. Well,
like a level 86 sage, guys. I know what I'm doing. Most of the time, I remember what my buttons are. I'm about to say, I feel like this is some fucking mace window. The council does not recognize you. It's just funny that he's like, ah, oh, yes, you too, my friend, can can take the the uh, walk of the, the phenomena because you're associated with our alumni and the students of Valdez again. And I'm like, my guy, I did the whole Sage quest line already. Like, I'm... One of your people handed me a magic Charlie and rock, and I'm actually pretty good at it. Put on my professional hat. Okay, so we, we, you know, we have five professors who need help from various classes. Got it. Oh, they're weird and quirky? I couldn't have guessed. <laughs> Crafter, you can do all the stuff. Mm -hmm. What about you? I'm going to character menu and switch back to Paladin. That's no good. It wasn't too long ago that I was uh, doing the uh, Crystarium ones. The Crystalline Mean. Oh, yeah, shit. I don't actually know if I've gone back to the Crystarium and unlocked that line. I should remember. Because I did all my Fisher stuff up through, you know, Stormblood. And then it takes a turn. Slowly progressing on minor, while also fulfilling my custom deliveries. I've maxed out Zloe. She can eat pudding twice a week now. What about the non-pudding days? <laughs> exactly what I asked. It's basically giving small children marbles. Mm -hmm. Small children like rocks. It makes sense. Gosh, I wish I remember what the... F I didn't do it that way because I was working on minor, but I'm trying to remember what the fish was for that tier. I do not recall at present. I'm sure it was very silly. is carrying the crates. I knew it. Hmm. 
Now, if you give me a burlap sack to put these in, I'm pretty sure I can transport all of them on account of things I've carried in burlap sacks before. Is it ever we also have this nice car with this wonderful invention called a trunk. It's true. I have many vehicles. I've got a car. I've got some other stuff. I have a giant T-Rex with a pack. Useful. Like several pack animals, yeah. That does make me wonder if they've ever done like a, a main story gag about the times the Warrior of Light has had to like stuff a mob that is clearly f like four times your size into a sack for something. Oh no, they've totally made jokes about how you fit things in your backpack. And a lot of the times, if you actually go into your inventory and look at the key item, you'll just be like, we don't know how this fits in here, but it fits. Oh yeah, I've definitely done that. I think I've done that on stream, where I've had to like beat up a small dinosaur, stuff it in a sack, and then just been like, okay, how am I doing this? And the, the tooltip is just, don't ask questions. We don't know. Aether. It's Aether, I don't gotta explain shit. <laughs> Teleport to Limsa. And get ready to see some bullshit. Oh, not too packed today. Like I said, we're in the calm between the before the storm. Oh, there we go. Everybody's hanging out uh, in the direction. That's why it's packed. I accidentally started walking away towards Hawker's Alley.
like, I don't actually think that Ishgard would really be that opposed to aiding Garlemald since I don't know the last time you guys actually fought any Garleans. You've mostly been busy shenanigans and dragons. Uh, that time with hikers, that's about it. That was kind of a thing. Hey, this guy. Welcome to the team, Maximum. Apparently it's against our rules. Don't go shouting, the warrior of light is here everywhere we go. Not that I do that anyway. In fact, I'm pretty sure I don't tell people who I am, just so it's funnier later. I... I... I do, but... Yes? Better be a fluffy coat. Yes, I will enter the royal palace. By the twelve. Hey, I recognize a lot of those people. Glad you could join us. I hope you don't mind, but we went ahead and started without you. Quite a goon squad you've As assembled. you can imagine, our traveling companions were eager to become acquainted. Tis a rare thing indeed to see such a diverse and talented group of individuals assembled for a single purpose. We fight not only for the sake of Eorzea, but for the entire world, including the people of Garlemald. Much rides on the efforts of the Ilzebard contingent. Indeed, which is why I am glad to find myself in the company of many trusted comrades, yourselves included. Lucia. I have come at the behest of Lord Emmerich, who has honored me with the role of Ishgard's representative. And for the good of all nations, not least my former homeland, I am determined to see this mission through to its end. We have a hard road ahead of us, but walk it we shall, together. We too welcome this opportunity to work together once more. I have faith that if there is a way to resolve this conflict, we will find it. Allow me to introduce you to the rest of our company. Everyone! If I may have your attention. Might I ask you to speak first? If I must, I am Arun Senna, spokesman for the Gridanian delegation. Here on behalf of my esteemed sister, the Elder Seedseer, we shall provide support and protection to those in need during our time in Garlemald. 
To that end, I am joined by healers selected by the Conjurer's Guild, with the Order of the Twin Adder's Finest serving as our escort. Suppose I'd better say my peace. Wait, I know you. The name's Sicard, in case you've forgotten. Truth be told, I'd rather you had forgotten. Any road, the Admiral asked Captain Hillfear to send his best, and for whatever reason, he picked me. Of course, if I'd refused, I'd be the laughing stock of the bloody executioners, and my reputation's taken enough of a key hauling as it is. But more importantly, like any pirate worth his salt, I know when you're staring down a storm, you gotta trust in the commander of your ship. So if the Admiral wants us to go to Garlemald, not for plunder and glory, but a promise of peace in our time, then that's what we'll do. Since we all know how much the Empire loves its steel, we thought we'd bring along a few smiths to make the most of it. Give them a pile of scrap and they'll cobble together anything you fancy. Of course, just like the Gradanians, we got fighters of our own. We might have come with a more constructive purpose in mind, but we're more than capable of cracking skulls, believe you me. Well, you're certainly raring to go, but then again, so are we. The most dependable warriors of Uldar and Alamigo have assembled at the Sultana and General Aldin's behest. If Garlemald has truly fallen, then the whole place is likely to be crawling with Telophoroi. We'll need plenty of troops to clear and hold a path for others to follow. That's where we come in. Naturally, Marshal Tarrapin and I will be leading from the front. It's been some time since I last saw you in your element on the battlefield. From what I've heard, you've become pretty fearsome yourself. Master Matoya, the Avatar of Destruction. Bridge <laughs> hiding behind his tarot cards. With comrades like these, I know we'll succeed, no matter what awaits. I just us. love how he just did the flip. <laughs> Just yeah. hides his face like behind a fan, yeah. <laughs> Thank it's just like. And then we might finally again. get a chance to enjoy a good long rest. But until then, we said nothing. Let's give it our all. I like my it's like it's a, teacher it's... standing next to him who was fanning himself earlier, presumably As because for he's Ishgard, fucking dying. We Temple in Knights have come in force to uphold our nation's commitment to the peace yeah, and welfare great. of our allies. No, I think there's a reason why that like fucking um, Uriante Bitter and Pancrete don't Garland like this is a formidable Bash enemy brother in kind of mentality. It's like our these two get together. Something weird about the fucking happening. Will prove invaluable in the days ahead. Accordingly, I have been designated commander of the Ilzabad contingent. I will do but now, in general, this scene is great, because, like, with the we don't go out of our way to require. introduce all the NPCs if you don't know them, but we use all the models so I can be like, hey, that's my buddy Alcazoa, you know? That's Definian back there. The four high houses, House Hylinart foremost among them, have arranged for a host of machinists to join us on our mission. Their knowledge of Imperial Magitech is sure to be a great boon. They will address any problems of a technical nature, together with the smiths of Limpsa Lumitsa. There is another awaiting introduction. Lord Emonelaine! Ah, yes. Uh, Emonelaine de Fortin, at your service. Though, lest there be any misunderstanding, I should stress that I've not become a fearsome warrior while you were away. Rather, far from it, actually. My brother, in his infinite wisdom, decided this would be an excellent chance to make something of myself. Oh, and fight for world peace and all that. But, should the opportunity arise for a spot of ballroom dancing, I will be your twinkle-toed gentleman of light. Huzzah! 
I cannot wait to regale on a hoa with my tales of daring do. I believe that concludes introductions for the Grand Company of Eorzea. Our allies from the Eastern Alliance were due to arrive some time ago, but it would appear they have been delayed. Would that be the Shinobi of Doma? Actually, they've been tasked with relaying messages back and forth between the various Eastern nations. According to Lord Hien, however, an equally capable company of warriors has been sent in their stead. Out of my way, you free I fool. knew who it would be. Ian's like, hey, I sent some guys. Oh no, it's gonna be those guys. Forgive us for coming late. We are the delegates of the Eastern yeah. Alliance. Sirena, and you've brought company. For battle and blood we come, as the step is sorely lacking in both. No towers befoul our lands, so we marched on those of Doma, only to find them beyond our So reach. I just want to say my headcanon is that Finn Daniel knew better than to put a tower on the step. Because <laughs> even if they were tempered, I'm sure these gremlins would just tear it down anyway. But now, first the slaughter will be slaked. No quarter to the enemy! Sadu Hatun, no. We go to make peace with the Iron Men, not war. Warriors of the Steppe, we've heard many tales of your bravery. We welcome you as allies. And these other ones you have brought are... Bosjans and Dalmascans. Members of the Dalmascan resistance group, Lente's Tears. And of course, we just have to assume that every Dalmascan Vera dresses like Fran. And the Bosjan resistance. Though the ladies in area do kind of have a theme. Between them, they have a wealth of experience in espionage, and are particularly adept at infiltrating Imperial facilities. Which is fortuitous, since Garlemol's domain is so vast that I could never hope to handle reconnaissance duties all by myself. Dalmasca, Bosia, Alamigo. All lands which have suffered the tyranny of the Empire. I would never presume to question your motives. Nevertheless, I must reiterate that our goal is to aid the victims of the Telophoroi, the common folk of Garlemald. And they are victims, make no mistake. Though I understand that many may struggle to see them as such. You're more right than you know. For every one of us that answered the call, there were a dozen that refused. Not only in Alamigo, but everywhere we went. And who could blame them? The Empire's always been the enemy. But after seeing what we've seen, fighting and working against and with Guardians, there's no denying the simple truth. They're just people. No different from you or I. They've got their share of liars and murderers, but so do we. So do we all. For Dola. Who once swore herself to Garlemald has proven herself a trusted ally time and time again. Every Eorzean here knows Sid Garland, the Imperial defector who shared with us countless technological wonders. Gaius Bloody Balesar himself is working to help rebuild Whirlit, a nation he once conquered. So you can believe me when I say that every fighter here understands and accepts that the Imperials are not monsters and are deserving of help. Or at least that they were able to put aside their feelings for the greater good. It won't be easy. But we're all determined to make this world a better place. What lingering concerns I may have had were clearly unwarranted. I agree with everything you said wholeheartedly. Then we are in accord. Now, let us review our strategy. To reach the Garlian capital in northern Ilsabad, we must cross the central mountain range. 
Unfortunately, Garland Ironworks can provide aerial transport, sparing us this most treacherous part of our journey. However, attempting to fly any closer to Garlemald would attract the attention of the Telophoroi. As they appear to have seized control of the majority of the Imperial military, we must assume that includes its fleet. In addition, Garlemald possesses devices that can interfere with airship navigational systems, further discouraging an airborne approach. Well, I guess the Eorzeans do have some airships, but that just makes me curious. The Garleans have an airship jamming technology? Why? It's only good against yourself. Given the circumstances, the closest we dare deploy our Probably for the is an area uh, between the range for, and the capital from the Magna Glacius. Technology from the provinces? I guess. Yeah, they also I've... have had several civil wars, so that doesn't strike me as un-Garlean, but it's still, it's funny. Well, that's one of those things. It's, from there, we must when travel you have technology, the rest of the it's best to make sure that other people can't we use will the same also need to bring the airships with us to ensure uh, we can um, withdraw with haste. Although much of the terrain will be blanketed in it's just because the yeah, airships aren't, aren't like you know swimming in fucking uh, airship technology. Doesn't mean they don't have it, and they're not afraid to use it. The vast ice. I guess also we have to remember that view of the surrounding area. You know, the, the war was the raging hand, on for a long time before even one point out, and there was a time so skip. It is so imperative that we only make Sid has been rattling around as a defector for a while. Uh, yeah, I'm um, actually double checked this. It has been approximately sixty years since the the Garlean started their invasion. Oh, so Ayers has been holding out for a while. Um. Yeah, no. Uh, I think they said it's like I think Alamigo we cannot was account for occupied every possibility, for so we must be prepared to years? think on our feet. Yeah, it was like out of twenty years, tested. and Doma was only like Sorely occupied tested, for like ten. But for our homes and for our people, it's like and a people not our own. It's a weird thing, need, but no, this is a, this is a long ass conflict. Yeah, it's been brewing for a while with ups and downs. But cons considering that, um, what's his face? I literally do not need to remember his name, but you know, Purple Goop was was able to spearhead developing alternate production models of weapons in you know a very short time after the Garleans dug up Ultima weapon. I wouldn't be surprised if they were like, "Yo, oh, hey, one of our greatest minds has flopped over to the side of the enemy. Quick, develop countermands to all the technology he knows how to build." figure it out spare no effort in your preparations once we depart there is no turning back Garma definitely feels like a thing where your local legatus just turns to his you know nerd squad and is just like figure it out and they're just like well shit now we got to figure it out this may be why they why uh, quite so many garlean technologies are uh, powered by forsaken children <laughs> cost-cutting measures <sighs> <laughs> I think it'd be time to actually run down and talk to everybody. like your bones and all their current arrangement, do not speak to a step woman. I'm pretty sure Masato Katan's version of dancing involves axes.
that uh, discussion with the step people about any relationship to sons, considering an interesting little rock I found in Amarant once, which has a suspiciously similar name. Let's not interpret that at all. I like that Lise is like, and when we find Thanos, we'll put him back in the ground where he fucking belongs. Well, he does have an empty fucking grave we found earlier. We got a home for him to go back to. Feels very, you know, revolutionary and army like. Well, yeah, like again, Stormblood was very much more on that geopolitical scale. So, you know, getting like everyone fucking together feels much more Stormblood than it ever would fucking Shadowbringers. Considering, you know, this just shit kind of never really happened in Shadowbringers. Yeah, we had other shit to do. I mean, I, I'm I'm sure that some music selection from Shadowbringers will be reused. Like, earlier when I was talking to Vritra about, like, you know, Dragon Song War shit, you know, we played one of the main motifs from Heavensward. So, uh, 14 does a really good job with its recurring light motifs and hearkening back to them. Hark. You know, when it, whenever we play that particular, like, drop of music that I associate with Emmett Selk, you know, that's when I'm like, oh, we're doing some fucking thinky shit in the shadows now. I got it. I understand what's going on. It all, it all works together. Oh, sorry. This is a thing I do for small Mikote orphans. Uh, sadly, none of the adventures we're about to go on count for this book. Chloe still wants me to do Labyrinth of the Ancients. I did have a funny time because... Uh, book I finished for this week's was, uh, did have a uh, bowl of embers, so I did funnily enough beat up Ifrit a lot. Yeah, it's literally Dunescape from the Labyrinth of the Agents. Oh, it's Crystal Conflict, though. That's fun. Let's see, let's see. I can actually queue for that in a reasonable time frame. I did front lines earlier. Got my ass beat. So, you know, a day that ends with Y. Yeah.
Wow, what a parenthetical text, Tataru. Don't you shave my cat boy like that. You should have summoned Tataru to the first. We would have fomented revolution much faster. I am getting a coat. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to mention it. Yes, you get a big fluffy coat. Yes, good coat. That's going in the glamour dresser. Wear it! It's gonna be fucking cold! inner light of a solo duty. <laughs> no, man, this is... Okay. Well, this is Night Grid. Oh, wait. Oh, this has multiple faces. Yeah. After boarding the airship, several cutscenes will play in sequence. Well, it's only 10 o'clock. We've been doing this for about two hours, so let's go. Oh, thank you for full-blown full, full telling me there will be checkpoints. But if you Man, log you out, jam. you're cooked. That's okay. We can play it out. This will probably be the big climax for the stream time. Ilsebad, divided in twain by a vast mountain range. Those who would traverse its jagged peaks face peril at every step. But why go by foot when one can simply fly? You're mocking me, Emmett. We can't simply fly. The aether currents are going to be all gummed up. How dare you? Well, that's what you get for having Emmett Cell narrate your journey. You're going to make a mockery of me. On the outskirts of the Imperial capital, in the frozen wastes of the Magna Glacius, You the wind which howled in an icy works, protest, uh, airship as if to warn flames. against further trespass. That is correct. Emanolin, you're from Ishgard! Received word from Thancred's reconnaissance party. They have sighted a detachment of heavily armed Imperials. Survivors of the Civil War, perhaps. Also, to be fair, perhaps, I don't know if a minute like there is more to it than that. Fucking fire in Ishgard, just saying. I mean, it is true. I don't think I've ever seen him just cruising the streets where he wasn't close to one of those, like, you know, coal burning furnaces they have on the street just to keep warm. There's a reason he was in the cloud area instead of the frozen Maxima area. Maxima like reports that they're brother. led by Vagilia, legatus of the Third Legion, which comprises the bulk of their number. Okay, Third Legion. However, they are also joined by several members of the First. From what I recall, the Third Legion fought for Nerva in the War of Succession following Varus's death. The First, on the other hand, were under the direct command of the Emperor and rejected Nerva's claim to the throne. These legions were enemies. Indeed. In fact, our sources claim that it was a conflict between them that sparked the civil war. <clears throat> Yet now, these former foes cooperate to defend a ruined Garlemald from invasion. Then it is all but certain they have been tempered. So, what's the plan? 
If me and my crew was out reaving, we'd charge straight in, no messing about. But that ain't what we're here for. Quite right. Soldiers or no, they are people of Garlemald. The very ones we have come to aid. Direct confrontation is unavoidable. Nevertheless, we must make every effort to limit casualties on both sides. Rather than kill them, I would remove them from the field. How so? Savage beatings, disarmament, and imprisonment? Not impossible, but easier said than done in the heat of battle. God, just watching Orange, a big thunk in his huge Having coat. observed the opposition, I imagine Thancred had something to suggest? He did. He and the other scouts have already infiltrated a supply depot some distance beyond the Imperial Detachment's current position. Stored within is a stockpile of Magitek armaments, and once we give the signal, Thancred's team will destroy them all. In so doing, we will deprive frontline troops of materiel, and likely force the detachment to send men to investigate. That's not a spelling error, by the way, Chad. That is actually the proper use of the phrase materiel. <laughs> Divide and conquer. Not a bad idea. Once the scouts have finished their preparations, we will split into two groups. The first will form the vanguard, while the other brings up the rear with our supplies. As for the scions, I ask that you lend your assistance where you deem it needed most. I would prefer, however, that you accompany the rear guard and be prepared to join the van at a moment's notice. Kept in reserve as our trump card, so to speak. proposal was well received. More specifically, they asked that we destroy the Imperials' toys in as spectacular a fashion as possible. Ishtola always did have a flair for the dramatic. She's not an easy woman to please, but I shall do my best to satisfy her thirst for fireworks. All right, once more for my peace of mind. Our first objective will be to rig the enemy's Magitek with explosives. After we've withdrawn to a safe distance, we'll detonate them remotely. Our second will be to issue a deactivation command to the automated units via the control terminal. If our calculations are correct, this signal should reach those deployed on the front line, giving our friends a much-needed upper hand. A blizzard will help us stay hidden, jokes, but so let's aim to get in and out before it passes. The Trust in the plan, and we should all live oh. to see tomorrow. In the meantime, I will relay messages back and forth as the situation unfolds. You'll forgive me if I ask again, but are you certain you wish to play the lone wolf? Maybe to Tar or Kyle. Wouldn't have it any other way. Call it no, I'd be Orion. I'd be Orion to be the one we call. Definitely, Very if well. Thancred is solid, I wish you the best, best of luck. Best fit. Yeah. This also, is Thancred. Yes. Thancred would call up Uriah J and say, I keep trying to sneak, but I'm too dummy thick. <laughs> Uriah J would just be like, must plow. No, sorry. Just mission specific actions. Okay. men and robots, but not dogs. Of course. Okay. 
normal stealth mission. Yeah? have three button combo and then our knit and then we have sneak buttons. Okay, we're having fun. shot at this, so let's make it count. Guards aren't too bright.
just me right now. <laughs> Everyone knows that talking will let you get uh get you seen. Explosives are in place. Ah, so this is truly is the very good. Sacred origin. All is proceeding yeah. as planned. Yep, that's it. Head to the control terminal. It so should I wasn't be to the sure west. Sure. That's like I said. This is Tankrit. Yes. Understood. Have the others wait. I do obviously that's a dialogue snippet because I've seen the dialogue box before, but no context. But no, that's just, just it's right there. Be losing my touch.
control terminal from back here. Turned, and none the worse for wear, yep. to my considerable relief. Honestly, that was pretty generous. I think there was like, like for probably like four or five fuck ups. What news from our comrades? Just had to be patient. They stand at the ready. Excellent. Then let the fireworks begin. Another universe, Thinkrid. I know Thinkrid got captured by Law of Raiders, but then he could probably use the one to find ultimate weapon. And after sneaking it up. Probably. Honestly, what? I think he was mostly off researching dark crystals, was, was why he got gooped by the bread. He caught a case of the mm. bread disease. The blizzard's to be beginning around. to clear. The vanguard should be engaging the Imperials Thank any you, moment Garlins, now, for making a highway. if they haven't yeah. already. Ishtola and the it's others are with them, them, so I'm sure they'll be alright, but... Also, you know, the Dark Crystal stuff from AAR, I feel like, hasn't really been... <gasps> hasn't really come back. Wait! Uh, I think Something's it was more coming! Like, so, like, you know... Officially dark crystals as it was just corrupted. <laughs> oi, oi! Looks like we ain't the only ones who sent out scouts. Keep them away from the carriages! We lose those, and we're as good as dead! Thank you for the warning to let me know that I'm gonna be me. Who knows? Give me someone else. Fighters, protect the others. But I could. You tried. I, I, I was at least personally in that cutscene.
fine display, but the other carriages are still in danger. Go on ahead. We'll hold the line. Turn the tide! Removed from the field was not a euphemism for enthusiastically murder. Cassius, remember they can cast sleep. It's nothing that won't heal in time. The trouble is, their tempering has made them utterly fearless. Subduing them would be easier if they had the <coughs> capacity to submit in the first place. Well, this is the path our young charges would have us walk, and that we all agreed to follow. You knew it would be hard, yet still you pledged your lance, did you not? That I did. the others take her down. There's no end to them! I was wondering when you'd turn up. I am here. There's no stopping us now. Come on. Let's show them what we're made of. Oh, I forgot Pippin uses a uh, Dark Knight moveset now. He's got bonds on the other sword. We have them now. Forward! Let them have it! 
don't think it really killed anybody unless it just reduced their HP by a lot. That could be a funny tank mechanic. Like a really big AoE, but it just weakens all the mobs. I remember Sadu's instant kill meteors. When do, when do Black Mage get those? Well, you still get meteors. <sighs> the worthy are 
Get fucking blasted, Magni! Get dunked upon! That was the last of them. The day is fucking ours. Going for a hug. Thanks to your What's wrong timely arrival. Hmm. Outmaneuvered, but not outmatched. Good. Let us take the Imperials into custody and rejoin our comrades. And soon we shall arrive at the capital. Super ominous evil tower. God, it's so spiky. So cold and unforgiving. Thus spoke Emperor Solace as he gazed upon his barren domain. Eight hundred years it had been since the Garleans first set foot here. Bested by the Kavosi, after centuries of war and driven from fertile southern pastures into the blasted northern wastes. In that garden of <coughs> desolation, they clung to one another for warmth, freezing, hungry, Desperate. Hated. Ooh, a Garlean Etherate. The Chosen Forsaken. It's like somebody's been shaving off bits of the Aetherite and taking it home as souvenirs. In the year 1513 of the Sixth Astral Era, a young Legatus named Solus single-handedly sparked the Magitech Revolution. How did he conceive the machina that feed on Ceruleum? Once a common, soft-spoken soldier, how had he so quickly ascended through the ranks? Like so many others, those who knew the truth are gone. Taking in the capital with his eyes for the first time, I recall thinking to myself, far colder on the earth than in the heavens. Yes, far colder indeed. Bitterly so. God, and it's so big. Huge! And that's when we do the Garlemald title card. I'm just imagining at the fucking draft meeting, Fen Daniel like shows his designs to Zenos, and Zenos is just like, it could use more spikes. Not so <laughs> much as a whisper. <laughs> The roads leading Yo, beyond dog, the city I heard you like spikes, so I put spikes years. on your spikes. Nevertheless, so you this can was one of the most important gateways into the capital. Hmm. How do we make it more intimidating? Ah, more spikes. Yes, I hired this architect. That's a porcupine. Yes, he's the best. I tried to get the hedgehog, but he was too fast to pin down. I hired this architect from a place a called the day Eye and of night Terror, with activity, and uh, they use a lot Merchants of spikes. Passing through so... the checkpoint. Many of them stopping yeah, at the local hospital. Yeah, chaos space marines to design this. He's also this good boy, Petsner Gigante. Also, I would, by the way, I would definitely mean uh, Shadow V, not Sonic the Hedgehog. In terms of architectural design. Surely they cannot all have been tempered. We can consider the question after we have made camp. If we spend any longer outside, we may well freeze to death where we stand. The tempered Imperials, too.
This will be our temporary base of operations. You do be cool. Secure shelter for ourselves and the injured, and dispatch scouts to survey the surrounding area. If we're planning on staying here a while, we ought to give this place a proper name. Hmm. Well, the constant sound of ice cracking underfoot makes me think of broken glass. An apt name, perhaps. But enough of this. To work, everyone. Many years I come here. I can now freely tell, well, not freely, but you know what I mean. I can teleport <laughs> the about for a negotiable <laughs> teleportation fee. So they just called it the Big Glacier. Very to ah. the point. I mean, people aren't as offended as you think. They usually just look at things and it's like, yeah, that's a thing. Cool. I mean, it's true. Our, the word for Earth is, you know, Earth. <laughs> Soil, <laughs> land, dirt. I think uh, <coughs> in the Twilight Imperium setting, they, they've given Earth a, like, oddly Nordic twist, and so the Earth faction is, like, of Yord, which is just, you know, like, the closest Nordic root word for dirt, soil. <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, it's not wrong, but it's very funny. Technically, you know, Heidelin is just named after Heidelin, whose business we are all here being about they ever explained what the exact, like, in-universe etymology of Eorzea is supposed to be, or do they just think it sounded cool? Uh, they probably, have, they've, they've probably, they've probably, like, detailed it in, uh, one of the, uh, encyclope encyclopedia Eorzeas. That's a lot of little information in it, but I can tell off the top of my head, nay. Yeah. Because, like, so some names in... You know, Final Fantasy games are very obvious uh, inspirations for stuff. Like, Final Fantasy VII has a lot of, uh, you know, strongly Nordic vibes for no exact reason, other than that it sounds really cool. But, uh, as, as you said, there's uh, quite a lot of thought is put into how everything in Eorzea and the greater world is supposed to come together. Our present situation is as follows. It's fucking cold. Efforts to aid the people of Garlemald have begun in earnest. Moreover, having entered into the capital, the Imperial Palace is within our reach. But before we proceed further, we must learn what has befallen this city. For therein lies the key to understanding and combating the Telophoroi's designs. I have a suggestion, mm. if I may. Several of the Imperial soldiers we captured on the Magna Glacias are members of the Populares and acquaintances of mine. 
Once we've cured them of their tempering, they should be able to give a reliable account of the events <laughs> leading to the capital's... Oh. A promising idea. I will assist the healers and the administrations. Of course, I will require a proxy of my own, assuming you can spare one. Would you like a hand? No, no, I am sure we will manage. Better that you take my place in the field. The noxious ether of this place disagrees with me, and as I shall need to draw on my own for the treatment, it will be prudent for me to remain within the camp. This talk of curing the tempered is all well and good, but I reckon the cold is a more pressing concern. All the houses round here are fitted with ceruleum eaters that could keep us warm and toasty. Problem is, the machines seem to have given up the ghost, and if we keep sitting around, freezing our asses off, we'll be next. My smiths reckon that with the right ah, yes. parts, Indoor they can have heating. them working again, but it won't be easy. I learned about this, oddly enough, in my gunbreaker quest line. Understood. The machinists will assist them in the repairs. The rest of us should either stand watch or survey the area. Actually, I'm kind of surprised that one guy's not gotten wrapped up in all this, but I suppose he is actually busy refitting Ishgard with indoor heating. Central air. We've made our presence known to the Telophroi. They will be searching for us, if they have not already ascertained our position. That we have seen no sign of them since the battle suggests they have yet to do so. However, I suspect they may be biding their time. Or perhaps we are beneath their notice. In any event, we'll find no answers standing around here. Urianje, Estinian, and myself mm. have visited Garlemald recently, so we'll lead the reconnaissance efforts. Perhaps bolstered by a few Bosnian and Dalmaskian scouts from my previous excursion for good measure. Don't forget about us Alamegans. We have experienced scouts of our own. Well now, this is turning out to be a rather sizable team. With such numbers, we should be able to cover a wide area with relative ease, including that surrounding the Imperial Palace. How about you, Graha? I have a feeling we'll find a use or two for that vanishing spell of yours. <laughs> Twould be my honor to be of service. Though I doubt that you of all people need rely on my tricks. That leaves us with guard duty. It's true. Thancred was able to, uh... Turned so invisible, I think his heart fucking stopped. Uh, just on his own merits and maybe with some Aether cartridges. He probably doesn't need stealth spells. As a matter of fact, I have something else in mind for the two of you and Alphano. Between here and the center of the capital lies the Eblen Rhyme. I would have you search the area for survivors. Your keen sense of direction, honed in your extensive travels, should prove useful in oh, navigating Lucia, the ice fields. I told you I have a keen sense of direction. I mean, you always get where you're going, eventually. I can be really stuck here by what? Yeah. Ice mechanics. Ice I've been around. This, too, is a vital task, and I appreciate your willingness to see it done. Rest assured that a serving of hot soup will be waiting for you. You all have your duties. I better get soup Let us make haste. Quest, then. May the fury bless problem. and keep you. Soup? From the soup store? I'm at soup. I think the Garleans have closed the soup store. God, look at us. Fucking... The crew is huge. Well, they only have government-authorized soup. I mean... 
if we're we're basically doing disaster relief right now, you know, uh, military intervention type shit. That is absolutely what we've been doing in this situation. It's fucking cold. You get big pots. You start making fucking soup, and you hand people bowls of soup. It's nourishing. It's hydrating. Keeps you fucking warm. Blinkies for everybody. I we must assume that it's probably the Garlians. Uh, not the Garlians. Uh, the these Guardians. The other guard sounds. These Guardians probably have the finest quilts. Garlian blankets probably have built-in ceruleum heaters. Oh, they're those. They're those blankets that have like the wires running through them. Yeah, the electric blanket. Yep. But yes, I suspect Is Ishgardian quilting is probably pretty good. I don't know who else out of the other, like, classical city-states would make good, like, quilting and blanketing. I guess Gridania, maybe, is probably, probably the, the coolest and most temperate. I think the hand-woven stuff from the people of the Azim step looks nice. Oh, well, yeah, if we're getting the Eastern Alliance involved, yeah, the step, the step have access to wool. And I, mean, I mean, Uldaf, I think Uldaf probably they, makes good clothing, just not necessarily warm clothing. Yeah, no. I mean, they need some insulation because it does get cold in the desert, but also just the way the city is structured is I don't think they yeah. really worry too much about that. I do actually think if I remember from Stormblood, I think they said <laughs> that the step gets cold at night, though. Oh, yeah, no. And it should. Those places, like, um... Big open sky with like no cloud cover at night. Nah, that shit. That temperature drops at night. Well, and the Azim Step is right next to a desert, and also I believe has a higher altitude because it's a lot like real life Mongolia. So yes, it would get quite brisk. Oh uh, yeah, the empty must be. Ugh. I mean, the empty is literally a desert of a everything, including aether. So yeah, that place probably sucks. I mean, Death Valley nearby... gets pretty cold at night, also. So. Yeah. The nearby, well, the, the Garlemald operated, uh, mm. occupied provinces, like, oh, she probably makes pretty warm clothes. Like, or at least the coats are warm. Uh, Delmask is a desert. I don't actually know what kind of climate Bosja had previously, as the only things I've seen in Bosja are fucking literal no man's land. Mm. So, I don't really know what their, their temperature range is like. Probably not whirl it. That seems more like temperate and pleasant mostly all i know about Bosch's weather is that the heads have been wet judging by the number of umbrellas they've stuck in lock boxes <laughs> that's one way to think about it Whatever these are, they have some fur. Ovibos. Uh, it's a giant sheep. Actually, wait. Ovibos? It's probably supposed to be a sheep bison, then. Like a yeah, giant yak or something? Yeah, probably. I mean, it's got curly horns like a sheep. Oh, there it is. I was about to say. It's also letting me get quite close before Aggerwick. Island, just saying, is that an Aether Kurt? No, it's just a wind sprite. They know. They know, and they've done this to us. Ugh. Of course, a monologue can sense a girl. Well, 
we'll track down this girl, but first, now let's say, crushes fevers. Paladin, not a ranger. Also, I'm not actually sure Archer slash Bard would be good at following footprints. I guess they did teach me a little bit about ambushes in Archer, in Archer school. they do gotta be pretty gassed up if they're gonna hang out here. I suspect the Garleans wouldn't want to see normal little ice sprites flitting around. We are kind of like on some kind of frozen lake with the Garleans giant ceruleum rig right there. Ceruleum rig. I mean that's what it is. It's it's clearly designed like an oil rig, but it's not oil, it's ceruleum. It's blue. Practice at this stalking chuckle box. Hey, up the com how frequently they check a bit. Oh, what the fuck is that guy? Story, different version. Garley and regional. Garley and regional thingy. I mean, it looks like a That's baby. Just Kukulin boss. It's just a perfectly normal rose. It's a bit overgrown. It does just say it's an overgrown rose. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> just wait a minute. Like, 
vision cone with an E pulsing. Sound gooey. Pardon me, young madam. Ooh, I maybe shouldn't stand so close to her.
listener doesn't know what a gazebo is. Cast detect evil on it, baby. I smite the gazebo. Well, Alice is going to cast fireball inside. I know that we're doing we were doing like a pan up scene transition to end the quest, but that was a very funny bit of like visual storytelling. The you know the woman we run into, Lucina, like looks off screen suspiciously after my comrades, and I'm just standing there staring at her, like, "Yeah, you got a problem? <laughs> you okay over that?" Healing effect to Holy Spirit, Holy Circle, and Confitor. Okay, cool. Ow. And melee mastery improves the damage of my attacks. Nito. Sad piano notes of the Garlean theme are very striking. Using the same what? note arrangement, but with, you know, like a little plink plunk. I mean, when you see what the what their land has become, it's just kind of a oh. Yeah, to, to think that, like, that, that theme used to preclude, like, oh boy, here comes Gaius Big Britches. He's going to give me a cool speech. Now it's just like, this is it. I think their shit's been wrecked a little bit, guys. A little bit. I should not be so forthcoming with this information. <laughs>
can't hide from me, lady. I've got huge ears. <laughs> also, it does mean that this ice is pretty secure. You wear LSA, these guys are feisty. Don't be afraid to break their kneecaps. Guards are sleeping.
because she doesn't trust us, Alice. A. She called us savages. What have you done, Arpanode? Killing civilians. No, they were dumbasses and tried to rule Alphano. trying to jump a sage, a green DPS. Mm-hmm. 
Zablin! Zablin, have you done a crime? Stealing cerulean. He's made a cerulean. I was talking about the bloodstains. <laughs> So this court has poles now, and fucking uh, legendary. He did a poll that says, "Lucky is a question mark," and the options are a rabbit, a tyrant, a boneless blob, or all of the above. And out of nine votes, seven went went all of the above. Blood trail. We found one. They were attacked. No. <gasps> Why? Why wouldn't they? Safer to brave the wilds than trust in our magic. We should have... I should have... We can't leave them like this. We have to take them home. What if we're only making it worse? Maybe we don't belong here, but neither do they. Not out here in the wind and the cold. the story about Varus's voice from beyond the grave. Of course I didn't believe it, but Lacinia and her sister did. Perhaps there is something to the tale after all. 
I feel like that's definitely a plot I've uh, experienced before, you know. The total leader of a place is supposed to be dead, but his voice keeps being heard over the radio. Actually, now that you mention it, it does sound on the bot a lot more familiar. Couldn't put I my finger on exactly what I've seen it in, but yeah, it, it no, seems like a bot. this for a while, if that's all right. Well, when you think we about it, that's kind of one of those, like, just... Us. We came as trespassers. Like, like we always talk about this with uh, Emperor Nero, you know, people were saying, like, he's dead, but no, he still lives! They see him in the streets! And stuff. Yeah. Lots of urban legends about Nero. But I pray that in time, we will be more than that to you. That we will find a way to help you. I would also say that would be a, co a semi common and see that no that more children are left to freeze alone very, in the snow. Uh, culty, culty, voice of, yeah, cults. Steeped in the cultism? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think there's a little bit of a cult of personality around the Emperor. The fact that all those bozos are like, Varus was definitely not killed, he's alive. We've heard his voice. He's definitely gonna come back. And on the one hand, I mean, like, out of, like, you know, major Imperial leaders, I would say my scorecard on guys who were supposed to have died but didn't is pretty high. <laughs> you know, uh, Emmett Selk, obviously. Anassian, not really dead. Uh, fucking, you know, Gaius survived, even though I knew he wasn't, he definitely wasn't dead because we never found a body. Uh, and Xenos himself literally came back from the dead. Fucking well, no, technically respond. his body was there. We just didn't make sure he was there. He was just there. Yeah, uh, his his uh, soul escaped and freeballed it for a while while an Asian borrowed his body. But he, he, you know, revivified himself. So, like, we're on a pretty good run. I don't remember what who the emperor before Varus was supposed to be like. He's definitely <laughs> dead. That's the... Technically, he wasn't alive, but they kept bringing Nail back, like, somehow. Sure, they use Nail a lot. Free shoot! Just hiding in these little, little lock boxes with clothing lying around. Let's see, we can teleport back to Camp Berkeley. Okay, so the Emperor before Varus was just Emmett Selk. Yeah. I'll go yeah. back to It was by design. <laughs> Wait, so was he supposed to have died recently? At the, the, his first hymns was supposed to have died recently as of AAR? What, when did the Civil War start? Because that's what triggered the Civil War. Because I, I feel like I remember there was a cutscene that was, like, full of, you know, uh, ominous Garlean forms, like, standing over a coffin, and they were like, ah, it's very sad, but then we got over yeah. it with this new guy. Yep. Virus spit on the coffin. Yeah. No. This hurts my brain a little bit. But I don't, that I just, think does that is... mean that I missed the opportunity to meet old man Emmett Selk? He was still around when I was ballin'? Well, it, it depends. Um, I don't think that ceremony happened until after Varus had a strong enough position to be emperor. That's fair, but still, it's, so it's that, kind of a, a so weird like, one timeline-wise. Also, I fucking missed uh, Lucia twice. Alright, okay, we'll run through this cutscene and see what's up. Back in the night. Just kind of chilling, looking at cutscenes, seeing what's up. We've gone to Garlemald, and it's very sad. Thank you for your report. It and is cold. very sad. But also somehow still we raining. We should inform the troops of these worse. developments and instruct them to proceed with the utmost caution should they encounter any survivors. Allow me to go and speak with the ones of the victor's spoils. They may be more willing to listen to a fellow Garlean and accept our offer of assistance. I pray you are right. And though I am loath to burden you any further, should there be an appropriate occasion to speak of Lacinia and her sister, please do so. I am sorry to have put you through yes. this. 
My distress is nothing compared to their suffering. I mean, guys, I don't know what you're so expecting coming to a, the, con the, the, to a country that literally hates your fucking guts. Born and bred for at least two gener- no, multiple generations. The funny part is that one guy talked earlier about, ah, oh, you've come to seek your revenge, so you guys realize that you're doing things that we might be upset about. But it's well, all yeah. fine. Glory to Garlemald. I mean, yeah. Like, I don't think anyone... As you may I don't think anyone's under the impression that, you know, people are going to roll over. The members of the popularis uh, I, I, mean, like, I the do think there the are some Imperials who are dumb enough, who are who are high enough on their own supply to believe that. But yeah, no. The, the, like, the Garleans, I mean, this is because this is exactly what the Garleans are doing, so I'm pretty sure they, they would have expect provided us with some someone to do it right back, because all they the know is revenge. Yeah. It's like they can only hit that one note. <laughs> it's like they have an entire cultural complex about being dispossessed. <laughs> Everybody did bad to us, therefore we shall return our homeland. Listen to this one. And do music. bad to them. The assassination of Emperor Varus was the catalyst for the civil war. Nerva declared his claim to the throne, and his opponents refused to recognize it. <coughs> Fighting broke out in the capital. Also, have we ever fucking third seen this Nerva guy? The first who remained loyal to Varus so, no. even after his death. That seems kind of wild to me that just like this guy is is touted as we know his name. He's the guy aiming for the next spot in the throne. Never seen him, never heard of him. Doesn't well, fucking it's, exist. It's one of those well, off of course, politics, you know. Even imperial warmongers oh, would at the idea of man turning their shining city <laughs> oh, into I hate that picture. I actually hate like that picture. Like burning so down dumb. the wood despite the wasps. Like you are so old Neither man. Neither side would be so mad. Here, I'll, I'll just point the post the web page. How much of a Unless brick wall is his face shaped something like? Or someone inflamed their animosity to such an extent man, that they could not money. help but act against their better judgment. I hate that hat so much. God, the hat is... <laughs> well, at least I know now that Varys got... It's his, it was his grandpa's hat. <coughs> it's like, why are you people like this? This is how we know Xenos actually has fashion sense. He took one look at this hat and was like... No way, bro. So clearly it's not a dumbest hat award, it's a trophy. And the, the hat is the trophy. <laughs> yeah, it's a trophy. It that's to that's mind how we recognize you dark, as being the Emperor of Garland. You have from the, the stupidest front hat. Specifically. Sounds about right to me. God, no, you're right. He is so This is this is is somebody drew uh, <coughs> like spellblade Ramu and then the team the art team was like Cool concept, no. We're gonna do something different. But I like the cut of your jib. I guess I... It's too bad oh, I've never canonically seen that Tychus. picture. I would have Varus loved to fucking razz Emmett Selk with took that. Advantage of rumors that Crown Prince Zeno hey, my guy, you ever heard of a straight razor? Wait, Orianji so. says that his picture's in all the textbooks. <laughs> all the history books. You could have shown it to us. Uh... Emmett is so lucky we were in a different dimension. I'm just imagining rolling up to, to Amarat when he's fucking, you know, has kidnapped my cat boy and just pull up a textbook and be like, hey, homie, is this you? Uh, look, nice I hat. Was, I was going through a phase, okay? He really was going through a phase. It was all part of my Elizabeth, elaborate plan. What better way to disparage your out enemies the than with the truth strange or a close enough so. approximation? <laughs> Indeed. But before their accusations could be substantiated, many of Titus's followers were silenced. Uh, while some were merely stripped of their status, others died under curious circumstances. Yeah, this is... One after another, suddenly and suspiciously. I mean, I do I do think that Garlemald captures very well, one, the uh, logistics, but also the strong political infighting of the Roman Empire. But also that kind of, like deeply Russian spirit of oh well uh, we're supposed to be super Again, cool but Elizabeth, everybody's definitely always like been against us okay it's not our fault no evidence everybody's was found always to picking on Varus, us okay certainly. listen I'm, I'm called Ivan the Terrible but I'm not that bad nevertheless Ivan Titus, the Nerva and the Third Legion would have judged Ivan it a brazen kind of attempt of by the Emperor to rid himself of his political enemies Ivan the fucky wucky 
Definitely didn't invent the secret police. And then, in the midst of this growing turmoil, Varus Soskalvis is murdered. And Garlemald's own prodigal son, Gaius Van Belsar, is named the murderer. To be honest, I feel like the Garleans don't know their own people very well if they assume that Gaius, not Zenos, killed Varus. If you were to, like, put those two on, on a... If I was to family feud blind test this and show Garleans two pictures and be like, which one of these bozos do you think is more likely to murder your emperor? Shortly thereafter, I mean, Nerva claims the right I think that's quite like partial... And in response, um, the um, first legion claims the assassination like, I, I was do part think of that the coup d'etat orchestrated by and, Titus um, and Nerva. But yeah, also, it, it's of also one of those things of like, well, we need someone to fucking blame. Also, guys, this is already a probably. So no one is at I fault. I guess he's technically a traitor. Probably rumors to be a traitor. Yeah. Yeah, like he didn't die, so people probably have seen him walking around. You know, not you know, that both espousing a garly and ideology. So like, it could have been him. Presumably to provide them and, with and the honestly, means and encouragement to pursue a swift who, victory. Were directly under and his that command, these contributions no came from the self same benefactor. Like any other royal family member. Actually, I don't think about that. I think like um, I've heard how Zenos has been like filling the fucking, Third Legion's coffers, but the first uh, cruelty as well. and just nihilism is just like actually like really fucking well known. I, yeah, I do. I do believe that most people, when they hear that Crown Prince Zenos is coming, they're just like, "Oh shit! Oh fuck! Get me the fuck out of here! I do not want to be here when that guy is here. I've got to be in a different it fucking would country." So. And then Zeno shows Though up to that new country. No, that the first fuck. Legion received funds from but I also do think, like, I do think um, Zenos is all, like, well known for his, he really doesn't give a fuck about politics. It's true. I suppose that is a thing that would be in his favor. Nobody would assume that Zenos would kill the Emperor to, like, assume the throne. That's silly. And to be fair, he didn't kill the Emperor to assume the throne. He killed the Emperor so he wouldn't use Black Rome, which might kill his friend. Then fucked off. Now he st he stands so wistfully under the, the moonlight with a giant sight. Playing both sides against uh, each other. The guys, entire time. did you know uh, Zenos is one of those guys who uh, he he discovered Bloodborne at a formative age, and now he won't shut the fuck up about it. He does <laughs> carry a giant scythe. Zenos is on uh, Garlean Twitter, Glitter. Well, he he and he he's played posting... Bloodborne after he played a bunch of after he went through his first weave phase. Yeah, it's true. He, he, I mean, let's, he, sure, maybe he played some of the classics, played some Ninja Gaiden, some Onimusha, um, but he, he definitely played Bloodborne, and now he's on Garlean Twitter talking about that that PC remaster is going to come anytime. He's going to play it with his friend. This is, this is, I, I, this is where I, 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 the information we gained from coping. my friends does not end there. One night, shortly Strategic after fighting broke out, perhaps. the capital was shaken by an immense tremor. From that point onward, they have no memories, no recollection of any events, including our clash on the Magna Glacius. But when asked about the Imperial Palace and its bizarre transformation, they somehow recall Emperor Varus giving them orders in oh, their dreams. Oh, no. Please don't. Don't have accidentally turned Varus into a primal. May the Tower of Babel stand oh, as testament like name. to the glory of God. Why are you doing this to me? Van Daniel! It's all your fault. Fuck you. It is all his fault. This sounds awfully familiar. We have something to show you all. Speaking about our Roman allegories, deification of dead emperors is also very common. Varus spoke to them through this radio. Behold, a radio. Perhaps it was a recording, but if not, yeah, I like that how Alvano showed that a phrase that is. I have something to show you all. Powered by a mysterious black stone. We are of one mind, then. The ether that permeates the ore used in this device is almost identical to that of the talismans. I see it. While it is likely more by coincidence Magical than design, these devices might also ward against a primal's influence. 
A picture is beginning to form. If the tremor felt throughout Garlemald was a wave of ether emitted by a primal, then while those within range would have been tempered, those huddled around a radio desperate for news concerning the Civil War would have been spared. No wonder Licinia kept it close. The propaganda machine saving lives. My friends, I must speak with you. I'm very curious. I do believe that one of the guys... A young man was caught trying to steal our supplies. He is a soldier of the Iron Anything Man, we you, think, but one who has not been made thrall. Hello, Serena. Uh, I think one of those bozos, though, did s mention a specific place they either got the materials that the, the radio was made of or where the engineers came from. Thankfully, Magni restrained him before... Oh, good. Magni spilled. did something useful. The stranger is outside, if you wish to ask him We're questions. lucky it was a male soldier. I think we do. I suppose if it was a female soldier, Magni asking her if she was his moonlight would have bamboozled her long enough to capture. Well, the, the female soldier would have to have been important enough to, do, to put up a good fight. I don't know. I think Magna might just be getting a little desperate. Who do we have here? I mean, you know, Garland women are tall. Look at Lucia. <gasps> Got some vibes. This guy's very blue. Garlians? It's a lad! Traitors to your homeland! Have you no shame? Anger! I'm gonna hey. be real, my dude. You have no homeland. Your homeland did this shit to yourself. Your empire is fucked. I am Lucia Junius. Your empire is shit. A temple knight of Ishgard. And you are? Not to mention, even before this, I was with my allies systematically disassembling your empire. So much so that your late emperor was going to turn to using weapons of mass destruction. That's how cool I am. But don't let me say that part out loud. Julius Pianobanus. And that's all you invaders will get from me. We are not here to invade Garlemald. Far from I, I love how you, you want to call us invaders. Isn't that right, Senor Like you, Ketel? our allies in Eorzea and the Far East fight in defense of their lives and their loved ones even as we speak. But it is the people of Garlemald who have suffered Also, most. just tactically speaking, this you see a know. giant fucking 10G tower out come there? To offer well, you our aid. It spawned many baby towers, which are currently fucking our shit up, so we want to put a stop to that. If we also save your lives in the process, I'm sure you'll be okay with that, right? And then this, this is where those guys are like, I was about to say, no, they would not be okay with it. Why would a proud soldier of the Empire be reduced to stealing? The situation must be dire indeed for you to go to such lengths. I'm pretty sure if a fucking Garlean I have this conversation you with you and doesn't use the word savages like three hours. times, they start having or a fucking turn aneurysm. A blind eye while you leave with your spoils. Which reminds me of, I think it was posted somewhere in one of our channels earlier. There was a, a gag of like some... My commander will determine I, how to deal like with you and yours. Or something, but it was like three Avatar The Last Airbender <laughs> characters in Frieza. <laughs> Oh, yes, um, Earth, yeah. Blizzard. Ah, Blizzard. yes, Earth, the elements. Earth, Earth, Earth fire, air, water, and racism. Yeah. <laughs> air, yeah. Earth, fire, racism. If you wish to treat with him, I will take you, but no more than three. Hi, Loth, how are you feeling? I don't much like the sound of oh, that. Loth, how you make it but in? if we do accept his proposal, I suggest the two oh. of us and... Hello. Hello. He's come to listen. Well, yeah, no, I, um, I'm cheating. I'm watching the stream so I can follow along, but I wasn't feeling the 14. Please allow me and Alize to act yeah, as engines. Right, that's how I'm feeling right now. We have been going for almost four hours, so probably after this cutscene and our next objective wrap up, why? I'll call it a night. I, I will we say, we are, we are about to, we are about to do eyes, the some scenes. The Guardian's face. This how is a very long series of quests that you're about to enter. Yeah. Probably is a good point to take a break then. Yep. Yep. We'll do a whole. That means we can do this next sequence next. It's not the worst. Like honestly, like I don't know if we'll even get to the next dungeon next week because there is true. there's a solo there's the solo duty to end all solo duty right. coming up. But a chance. Yeah. Of oh yeah, that is well, coming well, up, isn't it? Well, the dungeon's like oh okay. I don't know how many cutscenes are up before, but it's soon after that. 
Yeah, it is. But like I said, the the there's a you have to, like, there's Yeah, that Call of Duty might be a better place to end. And I can start see with that persuading you otherwise is a lost cause. Like but you will proceed you with the, the utmost take care. Anywhere between maybe thirty minutes to an hour. We'll yeah, see, because no, the, the the sequence today when I did a solo duty where they warned me about several cutscenes didn't actually take that long with the sneaking segment they, and then the big fight, but... I am, to I am told they made it easier. Oh, did they? Well, it only took me 20 minutes. I didn't fail, though. Oh, I didn't fail either, but... But yeah, so the time limit's 24 minutes now. Is this an insult? So they shortened it. Oh, really? I thought it was a, Not was in the least. a half hour? You will find well, that they are more than qualified to speak on our behalf. It's it's basically feels like uh, talking about pre nerf There are many dangers on the road ahead. Like, did you do it before I'll the nerf? Only that back. <coughs> also, I this this guy's a great representation of the entitlement of Garlewall. He's like a couple of children in a cell sword. And I'm like, yeah, hi, I'm the Warrior of Light. Uh, this is oh, Alpha no, and Alize. Don't hey, you I'm worry. Don't bitch. you worry. Yeah, I guess it. Because, uh, you know, uh, li literally earlier on today's stream, before we left for Garlemald, we went back to the studium, and Alize was like, oh, yeah, you know, youngest guy to ever go to studium, graduated with honors. This guy does. This is. Th th Wow, what's his name? Julius. He is a perfect example of that. He lacks critical information meme. Bankrate in particular. Mm -hmm. I think. Uh, I think if I can judge that conversation Lucia just had with me, I think Bankrate is already following me. He's under that pile of snow right now. Mm -hmm. But it is almost midnight. We have been going for almost uh, four hours. And as, as the boys have just said, this will be a sequence. So I think that's where we'll resume last time. We're right next to uh, the 8th Raid in Garlemald, so I can easily return here. Yeah, I will say it's... it's uh, and Walker has a couple, a couple moments where he's like, you, don't really, you really don't want to stop, and we're about to hit it. Yeah, so that sounds like a good uh, run through for the next time. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, obviously, it was mostly me uh, uh, running cutscenes and solos today, but thanks for yep. the boys for hanging out and being available to help. I do know that at least a couple of you were running around punching mobs while I was walking up and down Garlemald, so thanks as well. Uh, and we'll see you guys next time. Be sure to check out streams that came out earlier this week, like Power Wash Simulator. That was cool. That was fun. All right. Good night, then, everybody. Good night. Good night. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and share and stuff.